So we're going to discuss the intermediate value theorem. And to do that, let me look at a particular example of a function f of x equals 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. And I'm going to examine this on the interval, say, negative 1 to 2. So let's start by putting it into our, gra our graphing calculators. So y equals, and I want 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. And let's take a look at it using our table function. So once you got the equation entered into your calculator, hit the second key, then the table function. Well, let's just look at it at those two points, at negative 1 and 2, the endpoints of that interval that I gave you. Now what happens here? The function goes from 0 all the way up to 36, right? So let's kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, come on. Oh, that's zooming in, sorry. Zoom out. So I'm not sure exactly what the function looks like. It's got to be some kind of parabola. But the function at negative 1 is right here on the x-axis. And when I get over here to 2, the function's way up here at x equals 36. Okay. Let's understand what the intermediate value theorem says. Since the function itself is a nice continuous function, Somehow, it doesn't matter how it gets from here to here, it can get here anyway, as long as it's a continuous function, it has to pass through every value between, say, 0 and 36. Somewhere, there's a value of x that gives me any value of y that you want. So in particular, at some point here, this has to pass through, say, y equals 10. We should be able to find the value of x so that this graph will cross and that value of x gives me y equals 10. Now you can do that for any value of y in the interval 0 to 36 as long as this is a continuous function. Now I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. One is more like the brute force approach that we might have done 10 years ago in this class. And that is, to find where this crosses y equals 10, you'd set 5x squared plus 7x minus 2 equal to 10. And that's a quadratic equation. So you would just go ahead and solve it. You'd add 10 to both sides. Uh, plus 2, thank you. Um, actually, subtract 10 from both sides. So 5x squared plus 7x minus 8 equals 0, and you look at that for a second, you try and factor it, and you're like, oh, I was terrible at factoring these. So if you can't factor it, what's your fallback? Quadratic formula. Good. So quadratic formula, A, B, and C, 5, 7, negative 8. So let's practice the quadratic formula a little bit. I'm curious, how many of you have had instructors that sang the quadratic formula to, say, a college fight song? Yay. How many people want to hear me sing? No. <laughs> it ain't, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right. So the thing that people get a little bit mixed up on when they plug things in is when they're plugging in a negative value. So I suggest that you plug those in with parentheses. Oops, that should be a 7. So the negative of 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 8 over 2 times 5. Let's clean that up a little bit. 
negative 7 plus or minus 49 plus what uh, 160 209 over 10 there we go so at that point actually at either of these two points the function should cross the uh, the line y equals 10 let's see that that happens so take out your calculator let's set the window between negative 1 and 2 in accordance with the way we set up the problem and hit zoom zero get a nice graph of the function so it starts out at zero if you'd like you can add another function to this you can add y equals 10 just to make it very very clear I hope that wasn't one of mine I'm just I'm kidding <laughs> don't worry they're indestructible so what we wanted to find was where do those two lines cross each other? Where does a graph equal 10? We should, theoretically, we've already found it. So hit the trace key. We want to trace it at this value. Hit the left parenthesis, negative 7 plus the square root of 209 two right parentheses. The first one closes off the square root. The second one closes off the numerator divided by 10. Now when I press the enter key, I should have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. What should my y coordinate be? 10. So there's the decimal value of this for the positive root and y equals 10. Nailed it. All right, so that's kind of a brute force approach. That's the way we would have done the problem in this class 10 years ago when graphing calculators weren't quite as uh, well used. But let's see if we can't do that a little bit better here. Now, if you haven't already done so, go back to your uh, equation editor and plug in an extra function, y equals 10. What we're going to do is we're going to see where those two graphs cross each other. So plug that in, hit the graph key. Let's go back and see if we can't find that point a different way. What we did so far, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just kind of a nice algebraic approach to this. But I'm encouraging the use of technology here. So let's hit the second key, then the trace key, or second key, the yeah, second key, then the trace key. And it gives us a few options. One of those options is to find where two lines intersect each other. So don't tell my algebra students about this, okay? All right. That's a secret from them. But for you guys, this is cool. So on the first curve, move your cursor around until you find a point near their point of intersection. And then press Enter. Then it moves the cursor to the second curve. Press enter again, and press enter one last time. It should help you find that point. There's your point of intersection. Are you able to get that point? All right, cool. Now, another thing that you could have done would be to try and find the, let's see, um, the, the zero or the x-intercept of this function, which is equivalent to this. And we'll go over a problem like that in a second. But for right now, are you comfortable with finding the intersection of two curves? And that's something that, you know, the, the college board asks you to be able to do as a calculus student when you take um, various tests coming out of college to try and get college placement or get credit for uh, having taken some courses in high school, is that you should be able to find that kind of a point and then use it. Let's practice some more here. One more like this with the intermediate value theorem. But the intermediate value theorem itself, which is part of the focus here, is just saying, all right, if you're going from zero to here, then the y coordinate passes every value in between. And you should be able to find that x coordinate 
that gives you a particular y coordinate. That's all the intermediate value theorem guarantees. Finding it is a different matter. It's just there. We know that it's there. All right, so one last one with the intermediate value theorem. This time, f of x is 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x minus 2. And again, we're going to look at on this, look at this on the interval negative 1 to 2. So let's enter this into our graphing calculator. Three x cubed minus four x squared plus seven x minus two. And I'll clear out this other function by two equals ten. I don't need that. As before, we'll hit our window. It's negative one to two, so we're okay again. And then zoom zero. That gives us a graph. One of the important features of a graph quite often is the fact that they cross the x-axis. They have an x-intercept. You can see that if you look at the table. A table of values for this function starting at negative one we're at negative 16, and up by 2, you get to 20. So somewhere between negative 1 and 2, you crossed a special line. You crossed the line y equals 0, somewhere in there. The question is, where is that value of x? The intermediate value theorem guarantees that there is such a value of x, so that if I find that special value of x, that I'll get the value of y equals 0. And that's what our goal is right now, is to find that value of x. So let's go back to the graph. You can zoom box and try and find it that way, but again, let's use technology. Second, and then calc. Is there an option on this menu that looks promising? Yeah, the zero option. What you need to do is you need to find some bounds. You need to tell your calculator where to look for a zero. So you want to find a point to the left of where you think that is. You can tell that you're to the left because the y coordinate is negative. And then move someplace to the right. So cursor to the right. Y value is positive now. So I'll press enter again. It wants you to do an initial guess. You know what? Just press enter. I mean, you could be really nice to the calculator and try and move closer, but you don't have to. Look, the calculator's not going to have any hard feelings about it. Just press enter. What do you get for the, the x-coordinate? Yeah, I'm getting about one-third. So at x equal one-third, y equals zero. But I had two goals in discussing this with you. One is to make sure that you understood what the intermediate value theorem is, and the other one was to help you figure out how to use some of these features on your graphing calculator, in particular, the zero function. Do you want to practice with the zero function one more, or are we good there? Good? All right. Cool. You might want to go back to section, I think it was 2.5, and just look at a couple more problems. You know, Just make sure that you can find the roots of something like this.